Good morning, St. James. This is Christ the King Sunday, and it's also the, uh, the date of St. Cecilia, the patron saint of music. And well, we've got sprinkles of music during COVID. I know all of you have really missed singing hymns together and canticles, and it's just part of our poverty at the moment. But to enrich it, we have our chair of the stewardship committee, Bill Clark, wants to give you an update. Pierce, I hope that means they're not expecting me to come sing. Uh, that would not be good. Um, you know, they sprung this on me before the 8.30 to make a couple of announcements about stewardship, and so I wasn't quite ready. I had time to think about it during the 8.30 service. I I've been in sales um, 38 years, I think. I am, I am kind of old. I know that may, may shock some of you, but I've been in sales 38 years, and it's always about selling the story, selling the product, building the relationship, uh, getting the commitment and moving on. This might be the hardest sales job I've ever had um, because the commitment to stewardship is really an individual. Where's your faith? Where's your heart? Um, there go your treasures. All of these great stories in the Bible. And, and I can't bring that but so much to you. I think what brings it to me every Sunday is being here, looking out and seeing the uh, dynamic folks here, listening to the clergy and the great stuff that they're bringing to us, uh, Aaron and communications, recording these things, the videos that we put out. I hope everybody had fun with the uh, throwback video to 1999 stewardship. Um, but uh, it, it's, it, it's a challenging job when you can't be in front of the people as much as you want to be to talk about the story. And it's a challenging job when it's an individual commitment that you're going to make. Thank you for everybody who has pledged. The names are being published again. Uh, thank you for everybody who's still considering we're um, a little behind the eight ball, I guess, in the total number of commitments that we'd like to see at this point. We're going to push hard. We're going to be making phone calls through the end of the year. Uh, also, take note of your 2020 stewardship. I hate to be the bad guy, but every now and then somebody has to do it. Um, it really, it's a, it's a great thing to see the responses that we've got. It's a great thing to think about what we've got in front of us with a uh, new rector coming, a uh, uh, new commission structure. So much going on at this wonderful place. We need your support. We appreciate your support. Look deep in your heart. Think about that. And we look forward to hearing from you. If you need to hear from me on any single thing, go to Realm, look at my name, email me, call me. I'm 100% available to you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Barbara Whitesides, and I'm coming to... Um, tell you about a program while well, Advent starts next Sunday and I'm going to encourage you to participate in our Advent in a Box um, program that the Christian Formation Commission's put together. In this box, not this box, but in a box like this box will be all that you will need to make an Advent wreath, um, a little nativity set, and an outreach um, project for the congregation. This is appropriate for all ages, stages, families, singles, neighbors, friends. We've got plenty of boxes. They're free. I had a lot of people try to pay me for them. They're free, so um, please sign up. Uh, Shannon will be here um, after the service. If you haven't signed up, it, it's available on the website. So get a box and start Advent next week. Yay, Advent. <laughs> If you ordered a name tag, they're available with Don over to my right. Please use the buckets for your offering this morning. When you receive the Eucharist, please lay your hands out flat and then sit down after you've received. Wednesday, we have Bible Zoom study at 11 o'clock. Thanksgiving. No Bible study this week. No, oh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving dinners to sponsor a family. Your $55, you can provide a check here or table online. The Angel Tree is ready to support children this Christmas. It's $25 per child to support the Boys and Girls Club. And Santa will arrive at St. James on December 12th from 8 to noon. Look for details later. If you'd like to be a reader in our Sunday morning services, see one of the clergy after the service. And as always, grapevine for other details. Service begins on the first page of your worship leaflet. Please stand as you're able. Go 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land, inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountains heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. 
A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. 
I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we, we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you visit the Washington National Cathedral, as many of you have, you enter a sacred cavern. People mill around inside the vestibule, gathering in circles around the Canterbury-capped docents. And what begins as an architectural tour usually surprises most visitors by becoming a spiritual pilgrimage. What Travelocity identifies as a place of interest in the nation's capital can end up to be a place of veneration. To climb the high altar at the far east end of the nave, you process past all the splendid monuments of faith articulated in canvas, tapestry, wood, glass, stone, and bronze. And you also pass memorials to human achievement. For instance, you encounter the soulful statue of Abraham Lincoln. There are moon rocks high above the clear story ensconced in a sea of night blue stained glass. And you walk around the ghostly sarcophagi of presidents and bishops. And only after you've taken that guided walk through the chancel up and around the choir and the colossal organ, do you arrive at the high altar where Jesus sits sculpted on his glorious throne surrounded by the whole company of heaven as he balances the round earth in the palm of his hand like a ripe piece of fruit. It is Christ the King preparing to judge the world, preparing to separate the sheep from the goats, preparing to stand in judgment over everything that has happened since all things came to be. This vaulted stone veridos is the magnificent climatic focus of the cathedral's immense towering space. Even the most casual tourist who enters those colossal entrance doors depicting the creation in the story of Genesis, by the end of the tour, winds up at the altar of the Last Judgment, moving from the beginning of time through the entrance doors to the end of time, standing before the one who will sort out everything that has happened in between. Strangely, as you stand before the imposing figure of Christ on his throne, you actually obligate the judgment. You obligate the judgment that is moving toward you and you trust that judgment. You fear it 
but you know you need it. It is that balance bar God gives to provide anchoring as you step onto the high wire, the tightrope of life, now more perilous than ever. And Christ on the throne summons spiritual apprehension, but secures you in the conviction that God is finally trustworthy. This is where we stand every year on the last Sunday of Pentecost, the Feast of Christ the King. Sobering, isn't it? Today is the last Sunday in the long season of Pentecost that began back in May. And Sunday by Sunday, we've walked by the monuments of faith in the procession of Scripture's testimony declared in prayers and parables, miracles, poetry, revelation, wisdom, and the Psalms. And now it is time to celebrate the harvest of our spiritual pilgrimage, knowing our life together at St. James, even in this troubling, chaotic year, has yielded generosity and compassion, thoughtfulness, and charity, despite our separation. And we've made an impact in the world for Jesus' sake, been a light to the world with racial reconciliation and our gang ministry listening project, our, our work with mission and outreach partners. In addition, we've secured the future of our faith during the lockdown by calling a search committee, hammering out a strategic plan, a, a reorganization of ministry leadership, and electing a new vestry to select and call your next rector. After Sunday service, we are sent out declaring, let us go forth in the name of Christ. We are called to help Jesus ripen the health of the human family. And Jesus is clear about how this is to be done. Principally, eradicate evil from its suffocating grasp on our souls, a grasp that allows us to go grow comfortable with the terrorism of politics that causes the global humiliation of people's poverty. Jesus says, volunteer, get close to it. If we're not among poverty's victims, its harsh and brutal reality fades from us. We must talk poverty, walk poverty, visit poverty, invest our lives in poverty or we will be insulated by our own comfort and lose sight of its horrible effect. The only way to love your neighbor is to make them your neighbor. And so the fate of the earth is in the palm of your hand. Whether serve its human victims passionately or insulate yourself with the comforts of your own home. Do you know how humanity is like a great spider web? Touch it anywhere and the whole thing just trembles. And so as we move about our world, a compassionate gesture here, a selfish act there, what we do for good or ill will touch another and so on and so on until we know where the whole thing winds up. No man, no woman is an island. COVID-19 is proof enough that wearing a mask is not an option. Christ the King is not only the last judgment, it is also the last will and testament of Jesus. In his hand is the round earth perched like a piece of ripe fruit. And in the procession that is life itself, we walk by monuments of faith and human achievement. And we walk as pilgrims toward the throne when everything that has been up until now will get sorted out. But as we march this pilgrimage toward judgment, we will be asked to figure out how will I, in my life and with my companions at St. James, touch that spider web. And so we approach this altar with both apprehension and confidence, anxiety and trust, 
questions, yet hope. And ringing all the way along life's procession, we have been guided by God's docents, we call the saints. And these saints walk among us still. And they are monuments of faith and human achievement. And some are here this morning. They have heard Jesus' last will and become his fearless volunteers. They have located their lives among the poor. I was hungry and you gave me food, thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you covered me, sick and you took to my care, in prison and you came to me. And so do as you would to the least of these and you will be a ripe fruit in the saving hands of Christ. Let us stand and join together proclaiming our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this challenging and uncertain time, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church, and the world. We pray for the church that it may no, not grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ and serve as a beacon of hope to a suffering world. We pray for Michael, the presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, Pierce, our interim rector, our clergy, staff, wardens, and vestry, the search committee, and all who minister in your name. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we join together with brothers and sisters throughout the Anglican Communion as we pray for the Church of Bermuda, as well as those in the Diocese of East Carolina, in particular Christ Church and Galilee Mission in Creswell, St. Luke and St. Anne's Church in Roper, and St. James Wedding Guild. May we all join together across the diocese and the world in lifting up their ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for populations and places seeing an increase in coronavirus infections and for the scientists and physicians who are working to protect and serve. We pray especially for our president, the president-elect, the Congress, the courts, governors, mayors, and all those in positions of leadership. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that our hearts are crowded with gratitude as we celebrate the Feast of Thanksgiving. We have come to this, our feasting table, with great joy and eagerness. For we are truly grateful to you, our God, for all that we have been given. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. Let us pray for the wisdom and the will to eradicate the hatred and disrespect that weave through our culture and its official structures. Ignite a fire in us for racial equality. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those known to our community who stand in need of God's healing power, remembering especially Bill, David, Debbie, George Anna, Jill, Michael, Sarah, Ann, Simon, Terry, and others who we mention at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts that confident in your providence, we may be generous in sharing our resources. Grant that our churches and communities of faith may reflect your love as they minister to the most vulnerable among us. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have already lost loved ones and those who will yet suffer such loss, that they may know the consolation of your love we remember the names of those in which the flowers have been given. Charlotte S. Murchison, David R. Murchison, Jr., David R. Murchison III, Sally L. Harrison, and Horace H. Harrison. On this Sunday, we pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Gavin Dozier, John Sawyer, and Richard Jaggers, and others who we mention at this time. That with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, you know the needs of your church in every place. Look graciously upon the people of St. James Parish and grant us the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we move through the search process for our new rector. Thank you for the faithful stewards you have provided and will provide for our leadership. We give thanks for those who have committed to serve on the search committee and ask for blessing on their endeavors. Give us discernment, wisdom, patience, and confidence in your timing. Help us to care for each other with mutual trust, respect, kindness, and clarity of purpose. You are the Good Shepherd, and we ask you to shepherd us through this journey. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night when he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. For the forgiveness of sin, whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand and let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.